Hi guys, welcome back to Harry Makes Up. Today I'm in my studio and it is boiling hot. London has been having, I think you'd call it a heat wave. It's been really hot a minute. Um, so I forced myself into my studio, switched my lights on, and I wanted to show you my Pro Kit brushes. Now, obviously, these are all different prices. Some are quite expensive. However, I have done a blog post as well, which I will link below, um, with kind of brands that do cheaper alternatives if you're on a budget. So obviously with my Pro Kit brushes as well, I have many different ones within my kit, but I just wanted to show you kind of my staple brushes. So these are brushes that come with me to every single job, to every single shoot, and are brushes that I cannot live without. Some um, aren't made anymore, and some are kind of years and years and years old, but it shows you how quality brushes really will last you a lifetime if you look after them. Perhaps my most asked about brush is my Art Shop brush, and this you probably will have seen used by many other makeup artists, including Charlotte Tilbury, Lisa Eldridge, various different makeup artists, and it's literally a kind of tapered brush that I use for powder, blush, contour. I use it for pretty much everything, and I don't really buy brushes with kind of one purpose in mind. I mix and match depending on what I need it for. And the bristles on this are incredibly soft. It's really, really beautiful squirrel hair, super duper soft. And I think every time I use this brush, the first thing people comment on is how soft it is. This one was from the London Graphic Centre, but I have seen them before in many just kind of art shops that are, you know, um, a professional art shop. So have a look in your local art shop. Next is kind of big brush. This is the Face Blender by Bobbi Brown. And with this one, this has a really nice kind of full domed brush. So it's quite a wide brush and it's quite a large brush. Now, again, people use these for powdering, foundation, bronzing, all different uses. For me, I like this as a way to kind of buff it into the skin as like an extra um, clean brush buff almost. So if I've done a foundation or I've worked with powders and I want to buff it into the skin that little bit more, I just use this Bobbi Brown brush and I find this really good for making sure everything's super duper polished and it just looks beautiful on the skin. So another one now, I think I always refer to this as a stipple brush. This is the MAC, uh, I think it's actually, the number has rubbed off, it's the 188 and it has natural hair and synthetic hair. And what's really good about this as well, I think, is the fact that it just does really, really buff foundation into the skin perfectly. So this helps me not only build layers of foundation, but I find you can get that really super duper flawless finish with these brushes. And I like the smaller ones rather than the big ones because I find it's easier to get around the nose, under the eye, and really kind of even sculpt with kind of cream products with this brush. So I have several of these in my pro kit. Next up is the Charlotte Tilbury Sculpt Brush, and this, again, very similar to the Art Shop brush, which is probably what this brush was actually based on, I imagine. This is a nice kind of tapered edge brush. Again, I really, really like this one for contouring and sculpting, adding bronze to the temples or kind of the jawline, and it's quite good for kind of precise definition, but again, really lovely soft bristles and the perfect shape for sculpting. So next is a brush that's sadly discontinued now, but this was an old one by Ruby and Millie. It's super duper tiny, and again, I really like this for contouring or adding powder kind of in really small areas, like for under the eye, I like to use a smaller brush. Really, really nice and small, and I like that the brush was quite short as well. And this one was just a really good all-rounder for kind of powder, blush, precise blush, or precise bronzer, um, and I just love this brush, and it's been with me for years and years. This is a brush by Japanesque. I don't know the name of it, but I will pop it in the description box below along with all the other brushes as well. And this has quite a small head on it, but I really like this for kind of super precise blusher or what I tend to use this most for was actually highlighting. And I like it because it really fits along the top of the cheekbone really beautifully and even kind of down the sides of the nose. So I use this for very precise work. And again, it's very soft bristles, but I do find this works with cream and powder products. For blush, I have a brush again. I think you could probably get this from Crown Brushes. Um, and this was from a trade fair I got, but it's Badger Hair. And again, it's very super, super soft and it kind of blends really nicely. It moves around the face really easily. And it's just a very, very soft brush with a nice kind of slightly domed rounded head. So lovely for blusher and bronzer and even powder. This is a really nice brush, but again, super soft. This is the number 18 brush by Shuamura, and this is made of goat hair. So again, very soft. Word, you're gonna get really bored of hearing me hit say in this video. Um, again, I use this a lot for cream blush. I really like it for that, but I also like this for foundation. And I've noticed a lot of makeup artists or assistants I've had do like using this for foundation. Um, again, really, really small little rounded kind of dome head, um, but it does make cream products go on like a dream or liquid foundation. So I really like this. And I probably use this most for cream blush. When it comes to concealer, I actually really like this brush by Real Techniques, and this is a setting brush. Um, it's synthetic bristles, and it's kind of a slightly tapered edge, 
a little bit rounded at the top, but what I find is really, really good with this brush is that it just blends concealers in beautifully, and again, the shape is just perfect to go under the eye. I do use it with powder sometimes as well under the eye, but I just absolutely love this for blending concealer, especially if I'm doing kind of like a highlighting concealer on one side of the face or down the nose or for precision work. I just find this is a really, really good brush, and it's super affordable. So moving on to eyes now, and the first two brushes that I have to mention that I think I've had for donkey's years now, and they've been in my kit since the beginning, are these two by NARS. They're a similar shape, but one is larger and one smaller. The smaller one is number 12, and the larger one is number 13. And they're both kind of rounded eyeshadow brushes, but I just find you can get such a build-up of looks with these, whether it's a really, really super soft finish or a wash of colour to a more intense the little one is great for going under the eye or doing kind of precision crease work. And the bigger one is really nice for kind of buffing colour on, softening out any edges and also kind of building up that wash of colour. So for smoky eyes, I use these nearly all the time. And I use them for generally putting a wash of colour on or um, just adding a little bit of definition where's needed. And um, cream and powder, they both work with beautifully. Now, it wouldn't be a brush video without giving a mention to the MAC 217. I think every beauty blogger knows this brush, every makeup artist has it. Again, I have several of these in my kit. Um, it's the MAC 217, really nice little kind of fluffy round head, um, quite a short head as well, but with this, it's quite a nice soft brush, and I just find with this, it is the ultimate eye blending brush, whether that's quite a tough eyeshadow that won't really budge, or you've got too much of a solid line, the 217 is your best friend when it comes to getting that really nice, seamless, blended edge with an eyeshadow. I find these work with powder, they work with cream, um, and I love them with the kind of gel formulation eyeshadows that set to a powder finish. These are really good kind of working with something that's ready to dry so that you can got time to still work in with this brush. My next brush is by Laura Mercier, and this is a super duper soft blending brush. I think this one, it might have a name, but the name's rubbed off, so again, I'll pop it in the description box. But this is just such a super soft, fluffy brush with a really nice tapered edge, and again, for super softening or kind of really fluffing out an eye shape, I love this, and it is such a soft brush. So this has been with me also since the beginning. The 219 brush by MAC, I really, really like. I like this for kind of precision work under the eye, but I also really like this if I want to do a kind of modern lip that's a little bit blended and a bit kind of, not smudged at the edges, but like no definite line. If I want to get a really seamless kind of faded out lip line, I just use this around the edges of the lipstick to stop the line looking too harsh. And I find that's a really, really good brush for that. The MAC 266, again, is one that's really well known, I think, between kind of beauty bloggers and makeup artists. A lot of people use this for eyeliner to get a really perfect um, eyeliner stroke, and it makes it really easy if you're not good at liquid liner. Um, I like it for brows, I like it for kind of shading in with dark shadow along the lash line. Um, again, precision work, I'm doing kind of graphic lines, it's really nice, and I think this is quite a good all-round brush, actually, to have in your kits. So next we have the MAC Fan Brush, and this is a little clear kind of synthetic bristle brush. And with this, I love this brush when, especially if I have people with blonder lashes or lighter lashes, you've probably seen me use this quite a lot in my videos. It means you can get the mascara right to the roots of the lashes so there's no blonde or lighter lash to be seen and it is a perfect kind of camouflage tool. Another brush that I think might be discontinued or you might be able to get in America still is the Makeup Forever 2S and this is the professional. It's a super, super thin brush, teeny tiny kind of head and again, the sable hair. And with this is literally my kind of eye precision brush. So if I want to do something right in the inner corner or again, some kind of precision work that's a bit more blunt rather than kind of a pointy or sharp line, this is my favorite brush. I think I probably brought this brush, if I'm honest, when I was about 14 with my pocket money and it was probably one of the first expensive brushes I brought. And I remember when Makeup Forever used to be in London on South Moulton Street store. Sadly, it is no longer anymore, but I love Makeup Forever brushes. I think they do such nice professional tools. And yeah, this has been with me since the beginning. In terms of eyeliner brushes, I do tend to mix up depending on the eye shape I'm working with and what I feel like using on the day. Um, one thing I do always carry around with me is little paint brushes from art shops. Now this probably cost me about £1.50. 50. The brand's rubbed off. But again, just go to your local art shop and have a good rummage round and have a look at what shapes you like. This is a super, super thin, I don't even know if you can see it if I zoom in, it's a super, super thin, fine brush. And what I like with this is, again, super thin lines or really good precision for liner. I always use this. Even if I'm going thicker on the end of a liner, sometimes I'll use a smaller brush as well just for the inner corner. So the other eyeliner brush I love as well is the Laura Mercier. I think this is the fold up liner which does have a lid so you can kind of take it apart. Great for traveling, but also it's very domed. The head is actually quite a kind of domed 
brush shape so it's kind of tapered thinner towards the top and I just love this for a if you've got big eyes or you want that 60s look you can do liner so quickly with this and really really big bold strokes of liner and again I just love the way this brush works. So last but not least, the brush that I have to give a mention to is my Shuamura Lip Brush. This is the 7H Kalinsky. If you look at the shape, you'll see it kind of tapers off to the side. So how it moves kind of mimics the lip shape. So if you hold it here, you can almost go that way and get the perfect lip line. Or if you want to turn it on its other angle, you can turn it here and go from the inside of the mouth all the way down. And the shape of the brush will actually help you create a perfect lip line. It's one of those kind of controversial things where some makeup artists love completely straight brushes. I like a curve on my brush because I think it's very hard to kind of draw a natural curve. And this brush, I just think makes lip application really easy. So that is one of my favorites. And again, I have several of those in my kit. So I hope that wasn't too boring guys. Like I said, just a quick rundown of brushes that people have been asking. It's been quite a requested video, um, what brushes I actually use in my pro kit. So some of these will be a bit pricey. Link the blog post below uh, for those of you who want to kind of look for suggestions that are more affordable. And let me know what brushes you guys like using. I am a brush hoarder through and through. So I always like to see new recommendations. So leave those in the comments below. So please subscribe and like, and I will see you guys soon for more videos. Thanks so much for watching, bye.